wanted to kick things off um, with some intros. So, Ghost, do you want to uh, go ahead and give us a quick intro on yourself and your project? Yeah, sure. Uh, so, first of all, thank you for so, so much for having me here. And uh, talking about myself, I'm Ghosty. Uh, some people call me Stitch. I'm the founder of DeFi Mons and Mon Studios. Uh, I have been a full stack web developer for the past six years. And I've worked with you know various entities ranging from smaller startups to MNCs such as T-Mobile. Uh, talking about my project, uh, DeFi Mons, it's, it's an in interoperable monster catching MMO. Um, uh, these were, you know, kind of big words, so I'll kind of explain them in uh, short. So, like, interoperable is uh, something that brings utility to existing projects. For example, board ape uh, character, NFT holders can move around in our game as board ape characters. Uh, then, monster catching is a game genre popularized by Pokemon, where you capture monsters, battle them, train them, and so on. And then, MMOs are multiple, uh, massively multiplayer online games where you can expect ton of other players to move around uh, on the map alongside you so there's a lot of interactions going on in our project and uh, yeah that's that's DeFi Mons. Uh, Mon Studios is kind of the entity behind DeFi Mons. We are planning a lot of projects uh, after this and we want to you know turn DeFi Mons into an, uh, a popular you know, intellectual property and uh, do various things with it. So Mon Studios was set up uh, for that purpose. Awesome. Yeah, thanks for the intro. Really excited to hear more. Um, and then we will uh, intro all the two team members here from Ava Labs. And we got a new one here on our spaces. Nikhil, you want to give us uh, an intro on yourself? Yeah, sure. Thanks. Thanks, Kyle. And, uh, you know, really excited to be here. Uh, good morning or good afternoon, everyone. And thanks for being here, go see. So uh, my name is Nikhil. I've been here on the BD team at Ava Labs for just over a year. Uh, started on the infrastructure and DeFi side, uh, just uh, but you know focusing along with Ed the last six months on the gaming side. So excited to be here, and I'll pass things off to Ed for a quick intro as well. Uh, hey everybody, I think I think I might have the record for the most uh, Twitter spaces on this account by now. But uh, I'm Ed, um, oversee Gaming BD here. Uh, excited to hear more about DeFi Mons today. Awesome, thanks everyone for joining. So, yeah, really excited to jump in here as we we've, we've all been mentioning. Gaming is really taking off on Avalanche, and um, you know there's obviously a lot of great things about the platform that, that make it great for games, and one of them is uh, kind of an MMORPG game that we really think is going to take off. So let's uh, jump into it, Ed and, and Nikhil, you guys take it away and, and walk us through it. Awesome, cool. So uh, you know, I'd, I'd love to kick things off, uh, Ghosty. So I think uh, you know, I could I could say this on behalf of a lot of people. I was a really big fan of Pokemon Red and Pokemon Yellow. Played that. A whole lot of my of my friends and my cousins game boys so and what i'm really curious about for DeFi mons is you know what is you know what, what is sort of the origin story not only for you but also for for DeFi mons in general uh it must have come from something interesting so would love to hear about that and start off from there yeah definitely so like uh, personally i have been involved in the crypto space since the beginning of 2021 and i got involved in some projects uh, you know and developed some things for uh, projects on harmony and uh, during the same time i saw the rise of crypto games or should i say game five projects uh, like DeFi kingdoms and uh, at, at the end of the day you know i thought to myself that hey the, we are calling these projects game games but uh, they're just you know point to point and click and uh, you're getting some rewards by clicking on some some different items and that's it it's it's not really you know interactive it's not really uh, fun uh, that fun to play and, uh, you know, then I also saw the rise of, you know, in development projects, which I should call, you know, because they have been in development and they have a roadmap for, I think, about two to three years. And these these pro teams are trying to build AAA games. And uh, what, what I saw with these uh, two different types of projects is that, uh, you know, most gamers aren't uh, crypto users and most crypto users aren't gamers. And uh, if you want to introduce uh, them, uh, introduce you know players to crypto, uh, crypto, then we need need a, a simple game, a simple platform, a simple entry, where all users can uh, you know use the game, play the game on any device, and that's that's how you know DeFi Mons came into being. So I was building out this uh, you know Pokemon style game for fun. And I showed it to some uh, crypto friends on and, uh, you know, shared the link around on Discord. And uh, 
got some feedback regarding this pro- project and they said that this could be a great thing and uh, we have been you know shared this out with the public uh, some a lot of community members liked the project and we built out a small community there a lot of community members joined the team and they they wanted to help us out um, and uh, you know build this together so this this has been a community project from the beginning we have been building out you know the game uh, in public releasing a new version every month and uh, yeah so like uh, from the existing projects like defi kingdoms or the triple a titles we have uh, we saw what was missing and what that is something that we are trying to fulfill with defi mods and uh, being a pokemon fan and you know uh, from from the beginning uh, i've played almost every pokemon game so uh, during this period now my nostalgia took over and that, that's how we decided that hey this this should be a pokemon style game uh because uh, in my mind uh, you know it fits perfectly in terms of crypto gaming in terms of nfts in terms of ownership uh, owning a monster within the game battling and uh, you know uh, meeting new people so that that's how defi mons came into being that's awesome no i think i think it's super exciting and uh, i completely agree on that front that there there are a lot of crypto games out there right now that um you know they're they're more accessible to the traditional gaming audience but i think what a lot of people forget is that you know most people might just be playing their games on either the phone or maybe within the browser itself and i i remember when talking to you early on you mentioned that was one of the one of the primary sort of uh inspirations here on that side so that's super exciting uh a follow up question to that uh, you know you've mentioned a lot of team members joining on uh from you know from the community itself which is which is super cool and so would love to hear a little bit more about you know about your team uh you know how how did you grow your team what are some of the you know their backgrounds were there a lot of them crypto native at first uh, did they come in from the gaming side and did a lot of them work on a lot of other gaming projects in the overall gaming ecosystem as well uh yeah so the team is really diverse to be honest and uh, most uh, mostly like we are on the game development front and uh, uh you know we don't really have that many developers on uh, the blockchain side a lot of team members are they are working for the first time in a uh, blockchain based project and uh, currently we have five game developers uh, each with at least 4 5 years of experience with phaser and browser games uh, one of them even has a gaming studio in france and uh, then we have a lot of pixel artists i, I think about 8 or 9 pixel artists animators and we recently hired a lot of concept artists and uh, initially like uh, as i mentioned a lot of people were from the community so our uh, initial two developers were from the community some pixel artists were from the community our game designer is also from the community so yeah a, a community based project and uh, a really really diverse team which which i'm really proud of Awesome. Yeah, no, definitely excited on that front. I'm a big fan of the pixel style art style. It reminds me a lot of Pokemon Red and Pokemon Yellow, which uh, which is what what drew me in uh, a lot interestingly. And so uh, a follow-up question there also is that so, you know, you mentioned a little bit of background, you know, building in the Harmony ecosystem. And so, you know, I think that segues pretty well into, you know, what were some of your original plans, uh, you know, along with DeFi Mons? Uh, I know in our earlier conversations, you you had given some given some context as to, you know, where you want to build. So, you know, where originally did you, you know, have an interest in building on DeFi Mons and how did you navigate uh, you know, over to Avalanche and to Avalanche subnets as well? Uh initially we, you know, we wanted to just build a simple game that that was monster catching, you move around uh on the map with your friends. But um, as as we move forward, move forward with the development, we realized the potential and what we can build this with. You know what things we can build, and uh, this comes on to you know uh, interoperability. So interacting with other players uh, in terms of uh, proximity audio, in terms of screen sharing, in terms of uh, you know more interactions, and actually you know trying to emulate the metaverse in in a Pokemon style game. um it's it's not an actual metaverse because uh, uh there there's um, still you know more interactions in, into the whole world and uh, during the development uh, you know we initially planned to launch this game on harmony uh, because uh, uh, you know i i did a research paper on sharding um, in college so that's that's how i got involved in with harmony projects and uh, 
then then we realized during the development that uh, hey this this is not scalable and uh, a lot of rpc issues then uh, you know during the de- development phase uh, we faced a lot of issues uh, uh, while building while deploying our contracts and this this some this is something that annoyed us a lot so you know uh, i think about uh, around in march we reached out to uh, you guys uh, that hey uh, maybe a subnet would be the answer to our all our problems in terms of scalability in terms of rpc issues and also you know we talk about other projects on how many for example defi kingdoms uh, their contracts are really really heavy and uh, th- this is something that i realized uh, f- for our project as well that uh, a lot of our contracts will be really heavy in terms of uh, calculations in terms of um, uh, you know uh, the gameplay and uh, we would require a lot of block space and we would require uh, you know it would make sense if the, if we had the whole chain to ourselves and that's that's how you know subnet started making more sense to me and to the whole team and we you know decided to reach out to you guys and uh, rest us you know the whole story that we are now here and uh, you guys have been really really helpful in terms of partnerships in terms of reaching out for integrations and uh, I'm, i'm really really happy about it Awesome. And I'm really glad we're really glad to have you guys in the ecosystem as well. And uh, you know, wouldn't want to have I mean, I guess, you know, I've always looked forward to a game like this and your team definitely is, you know, a, a great type of team to build this out. So, you know, one thing I'm curious about is that uh, you know, you mentioned you mentioned sort of having, you know, that sort of um, you know, inspiration also from the DeFi Kingdom side. So, you know, one thing I'm curious about is uh, you know, what was, you know, what was your sort of relationship with a, a lot of the folks with at DFK DAO? And uh, you know, I know a lot of them are also excited about DeFi Mons too. So, would love to hear about that. Um, so, yeah, uh, actually, like uh, as I mentioned, we started in January, and uh, around this time, you know, a lot of community members uh, got involved with the project, and uh, some of them, mem- some of those people, were members of the DFK DAO, and they have been, you know, helping us out. Uh, and reaching out to uh, different projects for uh, partnerships and also helping us out in uh, in terms of the game economy because uh, they have been involved in a lot of projects before and uh, you know uh, looking at the success of defi kingdoms they they saw some uh, missing pieces there and they have been you know helping us out uh, in figuring out what we can do to Im- improve on the on those fronts and uh, what we can you know Uh, try to build uh, try to do in terms of building a sustainable game economy that you know stays in terms of uh, in terms of uh, gameplay in terms of fun in terms of interactions and all those things that's cool to hear yeah no we're we're definitely we're definitely fans of those folks they're uh, you know they're also they they definitely make some really good tweets as well so you know if there are any dfk dao folks in the audience then uh, you know thanks th- thanks for helping bring ghosty and defi mons here onto avalanche Uh but you know I guess uh you know another question that you know would be you know really helpful to maybe us in the audience is that you know I I I tried the game out you know the beta is out and it's super exciting and it reminds me just like Pokemon Red and Yellow but to to user or player that maybe hasn't you know played the game yet uh could you maybe describe to us you know what is the overall experience that you guys are trying to you know curate and create when a user drops in for the first time uh you know maybe maybe a little high overview on you know what the gameplay is like for a person who's starting off for the first time what are they doing in this open world and uh you know what's the what's the main plot of the game um so a lot of different interactions are possible for a new player entering into the game but the overall you know environment that we are trying to build is uh, a fun a cute and uh, a warm feeling environment uh, where uh, you know you can interact with other players you can battle them you can capture monsters you can follow uh, you know a straight storyline and uh, actually like uh, we looked at pokemon storyline and we found that hey this this is something that we cannot um, you know uh, uh, implement directly into the crypto space we can you know change some things here and there and make it more interesting and uh, that's that's how we introduced you know certain elements of magic uh, so in, instead of you know capturing these monsters using pokeballs which uh, to to be honest to to me it doesn't make sense till now uh, how you can capture a whole monster into a pokeball uh, but uh, within our game uh, game system the whole storyline uh, essentially it's about uh, you capturing these monsters using magical crystals 
and uh, the storyline begins where uh, you know uh, the whole world uh, is being destroyed by these monsters all of a sudden and they start attacking these humans and uh, you have to figure out why why this is happening and uh, you you are uh, placed in a, in a town that where new people and uh, all these people have uh, come from you know destroyed towns they are they are looking for new homes and this is what we call the original settlers so they uh, settle in this uh, new uh, game uh, a new city a town called yorokobi and uh, from there we, they take over and they you know start exploring on why all this is happening and uh they you know start capturing initially monsters and then they realize the power of these crystals uh they then meet you know uh, during the storyline you'll meet lots of gods uh these gods are basically boss battles and uh, you'll uh, explore the story you will uh, try to find out why this is happening and uh, what you can do about it we have a, a lot of content uh, ready at least like for the next 8 to 9 months we have uh, you know the content ready in terms of the storyline in terms of what we are planning to do for uh, in game events we'll have a lot of in game events we'll have a lot of um, you know monthly events monthly uh, uh, you know introductions of new monsters introductions of new items within within the whole game ecosystem Awesome. No, that's great to hear. And you know, just just sort of like sort of like in the traditional Pokemon games as well, where there are you know a variety of different towns that you know the main protagonists are going to. Uh, is there going to be one giant world where you know like just one expansive world that's going to be here in Defi Mons? Or is it going to be a lot of you know sort of different micro towns that you know people can explore? Uh, you know, how how is sort of the world of Defi Mons structured like? What does that look like to you know the end player? Yeah so uh initially we start with two towns uh, one of them is a village one of them is a old town that was abandoned and uh, the players um, all the apartments are present initially in that town and uh, the players then explore uh, and meet people who uh, you know know more about these this area uh, the old town is basically mostly built with stone and it's it it's mostly old architecture the second uh, village that i mentioned is most more japanese style it uh, it has more hidden places and uh, then uh, slowly we uh, the humans and the settlers uh, start expanding to newer areas and they you know find new cities and uh, we'll be ex- expanding to different kinds of cities different kinds of towns uh, based on um, you know uh other game styles so there will be futuristic towns there will be you know uh, towns based in sand and we'll be uh, build, building a whole diverse world where uh, these kind of expansions will be introduced uh, you know with time to time and uh, with these expansions come newer monsters and uh, those will be the newer generations of monsters that we'll introduce and uh, yeah different types of monsters different uh, elements of the storylines side missions and uh, all those things awesome i'm excited to check it out and hopefully you know walk over some grass and a random monster pops up just like in the old pokemon games but uh you know uh, something that you sort of mentioned is you know a lot of the there are a lot of new monsters there might be different iterations of monsters so something i'm curious about is how do nfts and you know traditional also tokens factor into you know defi mons as overall game and an overall world are the different monsters you know specific nfts can nfts be bought uh you know maybe uh if possible if you could walk us through how does that look to the sort of end player who's interested in the nfts within the game and the token within the game uh yeah so uh, as i mentioned certain elements of the game are on chain certain elements of the game are off chain and uh, the battles are mostly like uh, half of them uh, half of the functionality is on chain and uh, w- within the battle you know for for a new user you buy a monster you uh, walk in the tall grass and you encounter a wild monster and if you are able to beat that monster if you are able to capture it then you will be able to mint that as an nft and uh, you will be able to trade that on the marketplace uh, if you choose to finish that monster then you will be able to mint certain item nfts which you can then further craft and uh, this this goes on towards our game economy which uh we have you know spent about 4 months designing this whole game economy where we moved from a single variable land we introduced different kinds of nfts uh and creating you know a circular system for the players to get uh, involved and make them feel um 
you know make make sure that uh, they feel uh, attracted towards playing more matches and capturing more monsters and so on and introducing newer generations so uh, uh, one thing that we are making sure is that initially all the players that can get the newer monsters uh, all those the monsters we are calling generation 0 and uh, the further generations will be you know much more expansive so uh, as as the next generation is introduced the previous generation gets rarer, rarer. so the even the common monsters will start appearing less and this way we are trying to make sure that we are you know rewarding the early players and also uh, you know all the apartment holders that uh, we are uh, you know uh, rewarding in terms of uh, item nfts in terms of skins in terms of monster nfts and uh, we we have a lot of different nfts e- even we have nfts for uh, uh, you know achievements uh those are non transferable nfts and we are trying to you know make use of this blockchain technology and uh, you know play around with whatever we can and uh, you know explore more in terms of blockchain in terms of uh, use cases of different nfts awesome and and you mentioned like you know items you mentioned apartments as well so it looks like nfts are not only just being used for you know in a traditional sort of manner but it looks like there's there there are other aspects as well that you guys are using it for so on the you know on the item side or even on the skin side uh you know what are some of the benefits uh, or some of the options that people will have for you know buying and selling these different items uh you know would it you know would people be able to you know be able to gain certain advantages from having certain skins and um you know what are some things that you guys are having on that side uh so we have a lot of different items and uh, initially we have 45 items planned each item has a different use case and uh, you know certain items uh, for example in, in pokemon you had certain items that you could use in the battle system to you know revive your monster or uh, you know revive uh, or save your monster from uh, frost or uh, you know any, any other s- certain status and uh, similarly we have uh, different items that you can craft within our game economy so mostly like all these items will come from battles and adventures and uh, you finish a monster you get certain item nfts which you can further craft and these item nfts you can use within the battle system to revive your monster to save it from frost to save it from sleep and all those things and uh, then there come skins so skins are mostly you know just uh, similar to uh, how skins work in fortnite uh, they don't really have that much of an effect in the whole game economy uh, they uh, they are just for show off and uh, uh certain elements for skins uh, that uh, a player might be interested in are uh, that these npcs on the map uh, and in the whole storyline will interact with the players differently based upon their skin so if if you are for example wearing a prisoner skin then the police officer will uh, interact with you in a different manner th- and uh, if you are wearing a normal skin then uh, the police officer will interact with you in, in a different manner and with all with the skins we'll we'll also be introducing certain you know missions that are limited to certain skins and uh, yeah uh, otherwise like uh, these skins do not play much of a role in the whole game economy and uh, all the players will be given a free skin to start with and uh, you can just log into our game and uh, you know create your profile and you'll be able to move around and interact with other players without in- even investing anything in the game Awesome. No, that, that that sounds great. And you mentioned that you know people will be able to play the game, you know, right out of the gate, which is you know you know crazy enough. It, it seems very foreign in the sort of Web three landscape, uh, where there are a lot of games that it's, it's it's highly required to you know spend a good amount to be a stakeholder, but also a player within the game, which has its purposes. But uh, you know, as you mentioned, one of the ethos for DeFi mods is to be extremely accessible, not only computationally, where the game is itself in a browser. uh where anyone can play in but also you know from a sort of voluntary aspect so uh you know my question is that you definitely I answered some aspects of this but uh you know how are you planning on sort of catering to you know the average player out there that traditionally plays maybe free to play games uh and you know more likely also gears towards uh you know more sort of casual style games as well um how do you plan on catering to that specific audience that is you know more custom to that free to play sort of experience but also uh you know more of that fun to play instead of play to earn Uh, so uh, as you mentioned like uh, the b- main target for our project was accessibility and uh, user experience and uh, it's part of the reason why we chose a subnet 
and uh, talking about accessibility so uh, we wanted to make sure that the game is playable on all devices that's why we you know started building this game out in with html5 and phaser and uh, we are trying to make sure that the game runs uh, extremely smooth even on low end hardware and even on old school laptops and all players get the same uh, same experience and uh, if if you want to play the game you just hop in and you create a profile and you can move around on the map and uh, if if you want to do battles then you buy a monster and uh, you can uh, you know participate in battles and uh, for for the prices of the monsters and the initial investment required into the project that would be pretty low and uh, the you know uh, the in- returns on that will vary uh, upon your skill set and upon your uh, you know upon your luck because at the end of the day i can have a common monster and i can uh, you know encounter a rare monster with, which would be the 10x the value and it just depends upon my skills if i'm able to capture it or not and uh, our game is mostly skill based and uh, the whole game economy is built into you know this aspect that uh, uh, the amount of funds that are coming into the game equals the amount of funds that are leaving and we are trying to make a sustainable game economy that runs in in, in the long term and uh, you know trying to make sure that all the players uh, are able to enter the game easily and if they want to exit at any point then they are able to withdraw their funds at an, any point also it definitely makes sense and uh, pretty refreshing to hear also that a game is uh, like a web3 game is focusing more so on the skill side of things instead of you know, traditional playing, uh, just playing and just earning. So uh, I'm really excited to do that and hopefully hopefully start, you know, start maybe creating some groups of folks, creating new strategies uh, to you know, beat other folks in, in the game. But, uh, you know, until then, I guess I'll wait. But I, I guess one thing I'm excited about, too, is you mentioned that the, the game itself is pretty dynamic, where if someone has a different skin, you know, uh, different NPCs will react to them in different ways. And also based on your reactions and your interactions with NPCs, it changes the overall course of the game as well. Uh, you, you mentioned a concept of morality uh, within the game. Could you describe a little bit about how you know how you've sort of integrated these different you know dynamic aspects into this game that make it so that it's constantly changing and the gameplay is really affected based on the decisions you make? Yeah, so morality plays a really really big role in in how you are you know how you will interact and how you will uh, you know encounter different monsters. Uh, based on your morality, your monsters might mutate into a different kind. So, uh, so certain players would want to, you know, capture if if they want to capture all monsters, then they would play around with the morality morality as well. And for for that, you know, there are certain items that you can use to change your morality. Otherwise, um, you know, it's mostly based upon your interactions. If if you are cha- uh, if you take certain actions uh, in the whole storyline that are good in terms of uh, you know helping others out then your morality while would increase uh, otherwise it would decrease and uh, based on the, these changes your monsters will mutate in uh, different kinds and based on these changes further interactions with other npcs also change so like the game uh, in terms of interactions is really dynamic and in terms of the battle system also there are a lot of variables uh, that we can control and we can we are trying to make sure that you know it's sustainable it's uh, you know it's fun and uh, it runs in the long term awesome that makes sense and uh, you know this, this sort of reminds me of a lot of uh, a lot of sort of rpgs where you know your decisions your overall uh, you know your overall persona as well uh, you know can change over time and you know based on how you choose to sort of go about quests is you know how you know how you you know what your reputation is within the game. So I think I think it's super exciting. And I'm not even sure if that was in the uh, traditional Pokemon Red and Yellow games. I think it's a great addition. And so uh, you know the a sort of follow up question to that is that you know there there are a lot of different aspects that are within this game. And the great thing is that I feel like unlike uh, a lot of Web three games, you guys have a beta that's already live that folks can try out right now and uh, even try some quests, some smaller quests. So you know, when you guys launch, uh, do, do you guys have a maybe a little bit about a little bit of information on overall timeline for the launch of the game specifically, uh, even if a, a rough timeline? And you know, what what can players expect uh, that can be live on launch date? Are you guys rolling out things periodically? Are you going to have a large portion of the game that is available? What does that look like to the player that is maybe trying this game out uh, when it launches? Uh, so we have a lot of different things in development right now. Uh, uh, as I mentioned, like we'll be launching our apartments uh, this month, 
and uh, alongside the apartments we'll be launching our apartment builder uh, where you can design your own apartments and uh, you know uh, later on you'll be able to invite your friends over and you'll be able to interact with them through proximity audio through whiteboards through screen sharing you can play music within the within these apartments so these kind of interactions will be available in the next two months and in terms of um, the overall roadmap for the whole game uh at at game launch uh, you can expect a whole new map the current art style is what we you know uh, used as an example to build out the whole uh, framework of the game and it's almost ready we have uh, developed our own uh, backend from the scratch within one month and uh, we are we have been you know working on the front end development for the whole game for the past four months and uh, i'm pretty happy with you know the current state uh, you can expect a whole uh, change in you know the art style and uh, we are uh, we have shared some uh, aspects of that on on our discord channels and uh, at the end uh, you can expect uh, monster catching you can expect uh, you know adventures adventures are basically passive uh, battles uh, where you can you know skip all these things and you can just skip the whole battles and uh, uh, the you know contracts play out the whole game for you and uh, then you can uh, expect crafting because all these things are tied up together and uh, you know we'll be uh, initially we'll be launching out crafting with battles and adventures on game launch and this would be by end of this year and uh, afterwards we'll be introducing player versus player uh, and all all the other gaming aspects such as farming such as fishing we have a lot of in game uh, you know uh, items and we have a lot of in game mini games uh, that players can play for free for uh, you know by adding in a certain amount of tokens by holding a certain nft and the players can get involved in uh, you know uh, smaller missions and they can participate in different quests so uh, the quests that we have done till now uh, i think we have done six quests they are basically you know uh, an example of what we can do and uh, we wanted to showcase a different functionality with each quest and uh, that's that's how we built out our whole different quests and uh, you know you can expect more story based and more uh, you know uh, interactions with different npcs and uh, you know, try to make more sense of these uh, quests in terms of the whole storyline of the project so at at the end of this year you can expect ad- adventures you can expect battles you can expect crafting uh, but other smaller uh, elements such as farming such as fishing all these things we we will, we will be you know launching in phases over the next year awesome no that's uh, that sounds great i'm definitely excited about some of the some of the smaller aspects as well that you know i remember just you know like you know whether it was fishing uh, I, I think that this that sort of adds a new sort of element to the game, you know, on top of the battling. So that's that, that's pretty exciting. And you mentioned apartments uh, a few times and the the apartment builder, which seems pretty cool. So you know, what are you know? Can you maybe shed a little bit of light on you know what these apartments are? What do they add to the gameplay? And uh, you know, w- what are some of the different features that come along with them? Uh, so apartments are uh, in-game land. Uh, they are uh, you know basically ownership of in-game land that. Uh, Uh, we will be initially launching and the apartments are limited uh, only 9500 apartments will exist in the entirety of the game holding an apartment is uh, you know not mandatory but it adds in uh, you know more value to to your whole gameplay because uh, apartments carry a lot of different features within uh, the first uh, few features i have already mentioned in terms of interactions so you know proximity audio whiteboards screen sharing music play all these things uh then come uh, you know interoperability so inter- uh, integrations with other projects we have currently started integrating two different projects one of them is a game nft so basically the whole nft uh, itself is a smaller game and the players would be able to you know interact with the arcade machine within their apartments and uh, they would be able to play that game within our game and uh, they will be able to you know use these different kinds of nfts um, and we are integrating manga nfts so players would be able to read their manga nfts within our game and they won't have to leave our website and these kind of inter- uh, integrations we are doing for the apartments um, you know you can hang your nfts as portraits uh, in your apartments and invite your friends over and show 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 your uh, you know nfts to other players and uh, then come the you know, comes the you know the overall uh, long term aspect of these apartments uh, which is staking so normally uh, you know our monsters do not regenerate their health or stamina 
and uh, you have to buy health packs you have to buy stamina packs to keep on playing but if you hold an apartment then you can stake your five of your monsters in th- in the smallest apartment and uh, you know they regenerate their health and stamina over time uh, usually it would be 24 hours to 48 hours and uh, you know you get a free health uh, uh, return and uh, uh, while uh, this would be important for players who are regularly playing so if, if i'm a regular player i do not want to spend a lot of money on health packs and stamina packs i can just buy a, a apartment and i can stake my monsters in it but if if i'm not a regular player i want to you know uh, hold, still hold an apartment i can rent out these slots to other players and to get a uh, you know regular income based upon um, who's using uh, who's renting out these slots and uh, they pay me a, so- a certain amount of fee and for 24 hours they can lo- lock in their uh, monster nfts and after that they can claim with with a health bonus so these kind of uh, interactions and these kind of long term returns are possible with apartments and uh, you know we are considering apartments to be a clean slate in terms of interactions in terms of what's possible and uh, all all the features that i mentioned have already been built or are in testing and uh, you know uh, it's uh, i'm not even sure what what all is possible with apartments right now because we have been constantly building we have been constantly adding in different integrations into these uh, nfts that sounds awesome uh yeah you know, i'm really excited to see you know what sort of uh, projects and what type of games you guys partner with uh to hopefully get uh you know apartments who knows maybe we'll see some of your favorite web3 games that you know might purchase their own apartments and have like mini games within them that people can access which you know i i think that'd be super exciting uh which sort of leads me to you know one of my final questions before we sort of pose things to the audience uh which is uh you know what what sort of projects are you guys looking to partner with because it sounds like you know within defi mons there are a lot of really cool uh cool aspects of the game and there's also a lot of cool places where you know partnerships sort of make sense whether it's you know integrating other games as you know mini games within defi mons uh, or whether it's also you know adding in different skins as well on that sort of side you know will we ever see you know maybe you know some you know random random game or random nft project that we like a lot of people like that might be as uh, you know integrated within this and is that something your team is pursuing yeah definitely so we have a lot of different kind of uh, you know uh, integrations possible and we are currently working with i think nine projects right now and we plan to at least um, launch with 20 integrations on game launch uh, these uh, integrations work towards uh, you know player skins so for example a board ape nft holder could you know join the game and they can select their board ape nft in within our uh, skins menu and they'll be able to move around as a board ape character and we already have integrated three projects on this front uh then talking about uh, integrations within the apartments so uh, nft integrations for nft portraits uh then uh, uh, integrations into the arcade machine for game nfts uh, uh then uh, ma- uh, integrations for manga nfts into the comic stand so these kind of interaction uh, integrations we are doing in the apartments then also we are doing long term partnerships with uh, you know projects that have uh, monsters as their uh, you know mascots kind of and uh, these mo- monsters will then be present as uh, uh, you know in game monsters within defi mons and will be launched as a gen 0 monster and uh, basically it, it gives the idea of uh, representing the whole community within within our game in the long term that's awesome yeah now i would love to see some of my favorite uh, you know web3 games and you know nft projects uh, you know hopefully you know i obviously have a ronin as my profile picture would love to see that uh, you know in game as a skin and uh i think you know final question before you know i think we can pass things off to the the community and we get some questions going is you know what are you guys planning for your launch of you know your subnet and for you know your your original sort of nfts and tokens are you guys planning on doing that in waves uh do you guys want to release versions of your game first uh and also if so you know with this launch how can folks uh you know in the audience right now uh you know get involved with you know this uh with the upcoming sort of token launch as well what can they expect um so we'll be launching in phases uh initially we are doing our apartment mint the end of this month and uh, apartments carry a lot of value and uh, you know the apartment holders will be uh, you know getting uh, all the other nfts as airdrops so if if you hold an apartment you have a chance of getting a monster 
if you hold an apartment you get uh, you know uh, item nfts as airdrops you get certain skin nfts as airdrops and also we are airdropping so certain skin nfts to people who participated in our quests initially uh, just as, as a sort of reward for uh, you know supporting the project early on and uh, these kind of nfts so initially we'll be doing our apartment mint then we'll be moving towards our subnet testnet launch alongside we'll be launching our token and uh, this would come in q3 and uh, with the subnet launch we'll be launching our own decks as well and the uh, players would be able to you know trade our token on on onto the decks and uh, we'll be partnering with uh, you know we are currently in talks with uh, different uh, decks for integrations and uh, integrations in terms of bringing in users from different chains and also in terms of bridging so all our nfts are uh, going to be on the chain and we are working with layer 0 uh, labs for uh, uh you know supporting this and uh, making sure that they are tradable on ethereum they are tradable on avalanche and uh, making sure like uh, we can try to uh, reach as many people as possible so current timeline looks like uh, apartment mint then subnet launch alongside the token launch and then the full game launch in q4 awesome no it's really exciting and you know for folks right now who you know are just too excited and they just want to get involved with defi mons right now uh you know any any final like you know call to actions uh you know like you know hey do you guys have a discord do you guys uh you know you guys mentioned you have a beta as well uh are you guys taking you know any sort of community advice on you know integrating new quests or new aspects of the game or adding to the lore uh is that something that the community can you know pay you know or play a role in Yeah so as i mentioned we are minting our apartments at the end of this month and we have a whitelist program for that uh any folks in the community who are interested in you know getting a whitelist slot and making sure that they are able to mint out an apartment uh they can hop onto our discord you know interact with our community and they can you know provide in ideas for the storyline they can provide in ideas for monster designs they can give ideas for um you know skin designs and uh, if if your design you know if your ideas turn out to be good and uh, are expected uh, are accepted by the team then uh, you'll be awarded a you know a whitelist slot and uh, we are trying to make sure that you know these slots are only awarded to people who are involved more into the project and who believe in the project in the long term and uh, yeah and if you if you guys have uh, you know a discord just hop onto our discord and get involved and uh, you know ask questions around uh, our community is really really helpful and uh, yeah I'll see you on the main date Awesome that sounds great. Yeah, I'm going to uh, I'm definitely I'm in the Discord and so uh, I'd like to play play a bigger role. I see that there are a lot of cool folks uh you know in the community already that are playing a pretty pretty big role on like coming up with different storylines and stuff. So I'm you know I'm excited to sort of see how you know how that plays out and how the sort of background and lore of the DeFi Mons universe sort of comes through. So uh you know I think uh, I think with that uh, I know that we have you know just a couple minutes left. I think maybe it'd be great to you know open things up to you know questions to the community uh, I'll leave that to Kyle to coordinate and uh you know would love to love to hear uh some folks and you know what their thoughts are Yeah absolutely uh thanks Nikhil for for walking us through that and Ghosty for all the great information I know there's a lot of excitement around this this game and the metaverse you're building so we're going to open up to some audience questions here um as a as a few reminders uh like we always mention Number 1 you have to be on mobile to speak on spaces so only request to be a speaker if you're on your mobile device and secondly uh just to make sure that we're optimizing our time here and and uh respecting our guests we want to keep all questions related to um to Ghost and DeFi Mon so the first one I'm going to call up here is um Bray NFT I know you uh requested a little while ago so let's see if your audio works and go ahead and ask a question Go ahead. Looks like you're still on mute. Hello, guys. Yep, we can hear you. Go ahead. Hi. I I didn't aware of the time situation at the moment. I was just wanted to shout out our project, but if there isn't any time left, it's okay. No problem. Yeah, we're gonna. We only got a few minutes left, but thanks for jumping on and um. Yeah, thanks for listening in. No problem. Yeah. And uh, let's go. Rowdy was the next one up here. All right, go ahead. All right. Looks like you're still on mute. Go ahead and try to to talk. All 
Uh, it looks like it may not be working. Rowdy, can you try your audio real quick? Yeah. yeah hey there, go. guys. How's it going? You know, can you know, okay. Good. Good. Yeah, we can hear you. Go ahead. Awesome. Yeah. Hey, so, uh, Ghosty, I just had a question regarding your statement of the uh, making this game uh, mostly skill based. Um, so, uh, you know, many current game five projects are RMG based, you know, backed by probability, making them a gamble, really. Uh, with your statement of making this game mostly skill based, is this pertaining to combat, like using your mon's best moves to defeat other trainers? or increasing one's chances of capturing a wild monster by weakening them, or status effects like Pokemon, you know, um, what's going to be done to ensure that this game can be mostly skill-based compared to the upcoming dice roll of, say, you know, DFK Duel with uh, DeFi Kingdoms? Yeah, so uh, in terms of, uh, uh, I think you already mentioned some of the aspects uh, which we are going to use, uh, that is, uh, you know, statuses and... Uh, you know, uh, different types. So, for example, each monster has a base type, uh, uh, you know, land, water, and air. Uh, each have weaknesses, each have advantages, and uh, the players will need, need to, you know, make sure that they play according to these um, weaknesses and advantages. And also, like, in terms of the whole gameplay, there, there are a lot of variables in terms of uh, the monster design, in terms of uh, which monster moves first, and all those things. We are taking, you know, we took the Pokemon battle system and we, you know, made changes to it, uh, try to improve it in uh, a certain manner. And, uh, you know, uh, initially, uh, what my thoughts regarding the Pokemon battle system was that the old school uh, battle system was better than the current one. And, uh, you know, we took ideas from the old school battle system, incorporated that. And uh, all the NFTs, all the monsters have a lot of different variables that you need to keep in mind. And, uh, you know, we'll be explaining out all these variables, uh, you know, in our docs and um, in for further AMAs. Uh, but yeah, uh, we have a lot of different variables. And uh, uh, this this comes out to, uh, to be, you know, the monster types. This comes out to be uh, how the monsters will interact with other monsters and uh, what weaknesses they have and what kind of items you are using within the battle system. So as I mentioned, we have 45 items planned. Each item has a different use case. And out of these 45, I think about 30 are what you can use within the battle system to improve your monster, to you know cause a certain weakness for the uh, enemy monster. And uh, you just have to you know make sure that uh, you're playing according to the you know uh, understanding the whole game uh, battle system and uh, playing accordingly. So it's it's uh, it's really really skill based, and uh, we'll be you know uh, tweaking it uh, as the game move for games you know game is moving forward, and we'll be introducing other elements to the battle system as well as we move forward. Awesome, yeah, thank you so much. You know, uh, I'm also a big fan of the old Pokemon battle system myself, so it's awesome to hear that. Thank you so much, Ghosty. Awesome. Thanks for the question. Appreciate it. Uh, appreciate for you for joining us. So um, it looks like we're running up here on time. Uh, real quick, does, are there any other questions from the audience um, for Ghosty here before we wrap things up? Just want to make sure we give everybody a chance to jump on. All right. Cool. Um, all right. We got one more. Here we go. Elba, let's try this one out. Do you have a question for Ghost? Yes, I do. Good morning or good afternoon, depending on where you are. Um, I just wanted to ask, uh, I'm a big, I, I love Avalanche, and I see the minting is on ETH for the apartments. Um, I don't know too much <laughs> about smart contracts, but is there a way that maybe some of them can be minted on Avalanche just because I haven't used the ETH chain for like a year because of fees? You know, and so if I don't have a white list, I'm not going to try to get it on public. Um, but I just wanted to find out if there was a way around that. Uh, so regarding the smart contracts, we are currently working with Three Sigma Labs. And, uh, you know, we are trying to make sure that uh, the contracts are optimized in terms of gas fees. And we'll make sure that, you know, you do not pay more than 2 to $3 for uh, the gas fees. And uh, uh, regarding the NFTs and regarding the Mint on Ethereum, uh, initially, you know, we planned the Mint on Ethereum uh, because of uh, integrations and partnerships and mostly, you know, uh, to, uh, because Ethereum has a bigger reach. And once we are able to, you know, bring these, uh, uh, you know, 
bring these uh, users onto uh, our subnet then we'll be able to you know uh, use these nfts uh, on different chains because they are mostly omni chain and uh, monsters will be uh, you know available on avalanche and uh, item nfts all these things will be available on avalanche uh, but the apartment mint will be initially on ethereum just just for the you know bringing in uh, different integrations and different projects from the ethereum uh, ecosystem if that makes sense okay i appreciate it and thank you for your time i'll, I'll try to mint over on on ethereum so cool thanks for the uh, question um and, and for joining us today we got one more here from andrew let's try this out andrew here let's uh you got a question for ghosty and then we'll wrap things up all right you're on uh i think you're on mute so but go ahead uh andrew you want to try to come off mute and see if the audio works all right looks like it may not be working um you're yeah i see that you're raising your hand you want to try to unmute yourself there you go go for it uh dropped off may not have been on mobile oh plan of finance um let's add you on here i know we've been talking recently you got a question for ghosty let's let it uh, load up here All right, go ahead. Um, come off mute, go ahead, you got a question? All right, looks like this one may not be working either. Uh, let's try one more time. Looks like you're still on mute if you wanna to try to ask a question. All right. Cool. Well, let's. Um, we only got a few minutes left. Let's wrap things up. I wanted to give Ghosty a chance to uh, give us any final parting thoughts, anything to look forward to, any places you want people to, to follow, um, and uh, and then we'll wrap things up. Yeah. So uh, currently, we have a lot of different things that are coming. We are working on, you know, videos for the storyline. We are working on art styles, and uh, you know, you should check out our Twitter page. You should check out our Discord channels. Uh, be on the lookout for all these things you know uh, we are trying to you know push forward our marketing a lot more now and uh, you'll also be hearing about our integrations and uh, um, about our partnerships uh, during the following month and uh, yeah ju just check out our game demo if if you like it if uh, if you want any changes because uh, the framework that uh, the current game demo uses will will be exactly reused and in, in the final game but the whole map would be different in terms of uh, the art style, in terms of uh, the characters and all those things. Awesome. Yeah, really looking forward to it. Make sure you guys are following along the DeFi Mons channels across uh, Discord, Twitter, all the socials. Um, so yeah, really, really um, grateful to have you here and, and walk, walk us through the upcoming Mint and the game and everything. Uh, Nikhil, Ed, any parting words from you guys? Yeah, I'm super excited to, you know, play DeFi Mons, you know, every other day. I feel like I'm, you know, on the beta, just sort of messing around with the game because I like how the world looks like. So, you know, really, really glad that Ghosty and the rest of your team are, you know, within the Avalanche ecosystem, building something really special. And, uh, you know, we're, you know, where we can help, we're always there. So, uh, you know, stay tuned, everybody, and try out their beta uh, if you ever get the chance. I'll pass things off to Ed, but, you know, thanks, everyone, for joining. Yeah, thanks, Kyle, Nikhil, and uh, Ghosty. Um, you know, Joe from our team, uh, Joe Ferreira posted this thread yesterday of, uh, you know, a t all the, a, a lot of the game five projects going on in the ecosystem and, you know, taking a step back, it, it was, it's pretty, pretty impressive to see what, you know, developers are doing in this space and, and we're looking to make this chain, you know, the top gaming chain out there. So stay tuned. We've got a lot more coming and, uh, you know, really excited about this space for the rest of 2022 and, and going into next year. Yes, Absolutely. Lots happening and lots more to come. So stay tuned for all the updates on more games coming to Avalanche. And uh, yeah, we'll see you guys on the next spaces. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, guys.